So we started off with the embrace, taking a side step to the left, going into the outside system of walking, leaving the cross by opening up the chest, pivoting and twisting on the uh, left foot as we move towards it, which causes the follower to pivot and drag the foot in front into a cross. We then over pivot her and taking our chest to the right to lead her foot through, we were catching it with our own right foot to lead a burrito and the follower could choose to lead her lead her back. From here we led into a sandwich, taking the follower over in a uh, uh, passada before going back into a gancho. Now if I straighten my follower up when she's in this position, her leg will straighten out. So if I move my left leg, I don't know where she's going, go back to the gancho please. Uh, if I move my left leg forward with the her, I'll get a gancho on either side. And then I can choose to lead her out in front before uh, taking her into a pianessa. So I'm leading my chest to the left, step behind my follower to get the high leg round. So that's what we covered in the lunchtime class. In our beginner's course in the evening, we looked at the hero and used and for the leaders, his and Enroske. So for the follower's point of view, we looked at the usual step pattern of a side step, a forward walk, and arching the foot around the so she's always trying to go back in front. And then her chest is twisted towards uh, the leader, so when she releases that back leg, she's going to pivot in, pivot towards the leader, and she can come straight to her. Okay. If the leader continues to move around to the left, the follower is going to do a side step, and we talk about the importance of actually doing the side step before taking a back step and pivot around, and again we talked about making sure the follower is reaching around to get that step. So the leader can just shuffle around while doing this, or what they can do is look his and then it. So if I've got my weight on my right foot, I can sweep the foot around, so the technical part of this is I'm going on the inside ball of the foot, so as it goes to the side, I'm on the inside ball, as it comes behind, I'm going to bring it in to a tight back cross, knees are together, and I pivot to turn myself. So I tend to do this by coming up onto the toes. Some people will do this uh, with flat foot. It's up to you to choose what you want to do. But when we put this together, I can, instead of doing my side steps to the left, I can sweep my foot around. This causes the follower to follow through and do my hero and do as many of his and then Ross goes as I wish, and the follower can do this in either direction. Then in the intermediate class, we started looking at putting cicadas in. So we were stepping into the space left by the follower's legs. This was to give fluency to these steps. So if I put my weight on my right foot, I can choose wherever I want to step through, leaving different cicadas, and then this built up into last week's beginner's class because we also looked at being able to take these back pivots, looking for sandwiches in the in the hero, so the hero is going around. I can add in what we did from last week's beginners class into it, and that was uh, a recap. Thank you for watching this Urban Tango Nights recap. If you like these videos, please subscribe to our channel by clicking the logo. You can find more of our class summaries down here and other videos of us dancing tango over here. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and Meta. Links are in the description below. And you can also subscribe to our newsletter using the link below.